Good morning, everyone. My name is Ray Chen, and I'm the technical winemaking support for An Artist Pacific. Today, the topic of my presentation is on maximizing color extraction and retention on Pinot Noir for Vintage 2020 in New Zealand. As a quick um, overview, I'll go over the following points in this presentation. First of all, um, color compounds in grapes, namely for anthocyanins, um, potential viticulture factors, which might influence the level of anthocyanins in grapes, the phenolic composition um, of Pinot Noir. Then we'll go into details on winemaking strategy to maximize extraction, retention, and stability by using enzyme at maceration, um, exogenous tannin at crusher and fermentation, selecting specific yeast strains, and the application of gum arabic solution to stabilize color complexes um, post-fermentation. So when we're referring to phenolic compounds responsible for color in grape stage, this is namely the furry anthocyanin compounds located within the vacuole of um, beer skin cells. The synthesis of anthocyanin is a relatively complex process and takes place during beer ripening, starting at raisin. So with the presence of plentiful sunlight and adequate temperature at this stage, Accumulation of anthocyanins is relatively rapid. This is also one of the most um, commonly recognized features of beer ripening. The optimal temperature range for anthocyanin synthesis is from um, 15 Celsius to 25 Celsius degree. Um, therefore, weather condition and exposure to sunlight are um, critical factors to cover color development at this stage. This can be related back to canopy management earlier on during the growing season, as um, excessive shading from vigorous vegetative growth will also have an impact on the availability of sunlight. In addition, yield and beer wake also alter um, the concentration and extraction later on due to changes in skin to pulp ratio. Below here is um, an illustration from the Australian Wine Research Institute on the timing um, on when tannin synthesis and anthocyanin synthesis take place, whilst um, tannin synthesis begins as early as the start of beer formation. Anthocyanin only starts to synthesize once vines reaches um, brazen. Grapes can contain more than 15 different forms of anthocyanin compounds, and the composition um, varies significantly between different varieties. For Pinot Noir specifically, it is found that melvedin 3 glucoside and to a lesser extent is acylated derivatives make up the majority of um, the anthocyanin profile in Pinot Noir, up to roughly around 70%. So this equivalent to around 100 milligrams per liter on average of um, melvedin 3 glucosides. Note that this monomeric compound is relatively unstable. And Pinot Noir on average lacks of um, acylated derivatives of all different anthocyanin compounds, which means that these compounds have an acyl group attached to the molecule, making them usually more stable. Tannin and other phenolic compounds wise, Pinot Noir is known for comprising a high C tannin concentration, majorly monomeric flavin 3 os and low molecular weight tannins. However, the extractability on these phenolic compounds are generally low. For harvest season this year in New Zealand, we're experiencing on average a higher temperature and warmer weather than usual, leading to early ripening and early harvesting. So when um, warmer weather takes place, a possible scenario is that this speeds up the transpiration of the vines, um, leading to a faster sugar accumulation and acid degradation. Whereas temperature-wise, um, the increase in um, temperature doesn't affect the rate of anthocyanin synthesis and tannin polymerization to the same extent. 
So then um, you might be facing the issue of having to harvest your grapes as it hits um, the targeting bricks level earlier than expected, whilst your anthocyanin and tannin profile um, haven't reached the desired levels. In addition, um, showing in the graph below here, Pinot Noir is comparatively low in total anthocyanin content to start with, um, as well as lacking the stable forms of such compounds. Therefore, in an early harvest year, Pinot Noir can subject to a higher risk of um, low color content in comparison to, um, for say, a highly pigmented variety such as Syrah. If this is the type of problem that you might be encountering, um, there are a few winemaking strategies you can implement to, first of all, maximize extraction of color compounds from the skins. And once you've extracted the color compounds, try to convert them into stable forms and minimize any potential precipitation. At G stage, um, especially for Pinot Noir, it is fairly common practice where winemakers carry out an extended maceration or cold soak in order to extract more anthocyanins. And as um, the anthocyanins are positively charged, they're readily um, soluble in water-like media. However, um, the prolonged maceration could lead to a higher risk of um, exposure to oxygen, hence oxidation, as well as the tank space being held up and uh, might potentially interfere with the logistics of intake in a winery. To shorten maceration time, the use of enzyme can be um, quite beneficial. So the enzyme breaks down cell wall and leads to berry softening and improve um, extractability. With the use of an artisan color plots, it is possible to even substitute out cold soak while still achieving the desired color extraction level. This product is a pactolytic um, enzymatic preparation, rich in pectinase and cellulosic, hemicellulasic, and endoproteasic side activities, which together um, accelerate and increase the extraction of the polyphenols. These enzyme activities um, assure the degradation of cell wall, increases permeability, and facilitates the diffusion of anthocyanins and tannins into the must. And the product is also allergen-free and vegan. So when the cell wall of grape berries are being um, broken down, few substances will be released into the juice. Besides um, anthocyanins, tannins will also be extracted. And so the lower molecular weight tannins can bind with the anthocyanins to create stable color compounds. And high molecular weight tannins contributes to um, general structure and the volume of wine. Aroma precursors and um, polysaccharides will also be extracted, which are beneficial for your aromatic and flavor profile as well as um, mouthfeel. The endoproteasic side activity in um, an artist's sign color plus is very beneficial for um, the promotion of stable color complexes. So the protease here um, hydrolyzes proteins, chopped in into smaller pieces, which can then react with the stable low molecular weight peptides in most to form stable colloids. With these stable colloids, um, free anthocyanins can react with them to form stable color complexes. And looking at some trial data here from the below graph, this is a maceration trial with and without an artisan color plus. Within 72 hours of maceration, the treatment with some color plus added at standard dosage had a color intensity which was about two units higher than the control. And here's another commercial trial ran in 2014 on the Pinot Noir wine. Show that after 48 hours of contact time, the treatment with Zyme Color Plus had three times more anthocyanin extraction compared to the control. And tenant wise, the difference in extraction essentially means that you're getting 60 ppm more grape seed tenants within 40, uh, 40, 48 hours compared to the control. So now that you've um, extracted out the color compounds from the skin, 
Keep in mind that these free anthocyanins are very susceptible to oxidation if not stabilized rapidly. Oxidation is an irrever uh, irreversible reaction and will cause shift in the color spectrum of the compounds. Free anthocyanins are also bleachable by SO2, which will then turn them into the colorless form and could precipitate out, um, out of suspension if binds to any unstable molecules in juice or wine. In an attempt to stabilize the free anthocyanin compounds as soon as possible, the addition of exogenous tannins is recommended. So these tannins can be added um, either as sacrificial tannin to bind to oxygen during maceration or crushing, or at the beginning of alcoholic fermentation when low alcohol content is present and there is a high reactivity between anthocyanins and tannins. So this graph here um, demonstrates the trend of anthocyanin and tannin accumulation during fermentation, as well as the timing where different reactions take place. So there are two major reactions between the compounds, um, condensation and co-pigmentation. Condensation takes place at early stage of fermentation, whereas co-pigmentation happens um, towards the second half and end of fermentation. Co-pigmentation takes place through an uh, intermolecular association between anthocyanin and some sort of um, co-pigments, leading to an increase in the absorption, ab absorbance and swift to a more blue and purplish color spectrum. The association is considered to be um, moderately stable. Condensation, on the other hand, um, forms covalent bounds where anthocyanins are modified to stable oligomers as a result from um, the substitution on the C4 position of their aromatic ring on the molecule. And keep in mind that this reaction can form the most um, stable color complexes. From the range of exogenous tannins products um, an artist offer, I want to focus on two products um, specifically suitable for the purpose of stabilizing color. Um, this is an artist's um, tan firm color and an artist's tan color. Tan firm color is a blend of condensed tanning from wood of um, exotic species and electric tannins from chestnut trees and taro. Aside from contributing to color stability, the product also imparts an um, aromatic complexity by increasing oaky and fruity notes and also improving structure by providing sweet and low astringency tannins. Tan color, um, on the other hand, is a blend of low molecular weight condensed grapeseed tannins, gallic and elagic tannins, and um, yeast holes rich in amino acids with a high antioxidant potential. When this product is being used um, at juice stage, it provides great um, antioxidant protection and can reduce the amount of um, sulfur you use. And the seed tanning promotes um, stable color compounds when used during fermentation. The recommended dosage for both products are um, at 20 to 40 grams per hectoliter. And they're both um, allergen-free, vegan, and approved for using while making of um, organic grapes. To achieve um, best results, we recommend two fraction additions into two parts. So first half at crusher or maceration. This is to maximize antioxidant protection from the moment grape are crushed. The gallic and elagic tannins are highly reactive oxygen scavengers as well as the yeast hole component in tan color, as these um, amino acids have antioxidant peptides on the end of the molecules. We sometimes um, refer to them as um, sacrificial tannins, as they will readily bind to oxygen, so your natural anthocyanin compounds extracted from the skin will be protected. The second half um, of addition shall be either um, at inoculation or early on during fermentation. So the highly reactive um, condensed tannins, alongside with the presence of um, acetaldehyde, will react with the free anthocyanins to form stable color complexes. Acetaldehyde is um, produced by yeast sugar metabolism during fermentation and is considered a um, relatively good electrophile, hence being able to act to bridge the two um, flavonoid A rings on the anthocyanin and tannin.
Condensation can take place in、um, various forms, either by direct reaction or reaction with acetaldehyde. For、um, direct reactions, you can have epsilon tenons,、um, abbreviated as AT conducts. So this reaction is slow and forms a colorless compound, which turns into a reddish orangey pigment with the presence of oxygen. Tannin and thiocyanin、um, Ta conducts have a different、um, position of linkage. These are the compounds that are independent of oxidation condition, colorless as well, and easily dehydrated to、um, reddish orangey pigments. Bonds can also be formed between two tannin compounds as well, resulting in a softened polymerized tannin complex. And the second type of reaction involves the bridging of ethanol, so that's、um, acetaldehyde. This happens、uh, when tannin and thiocyanin react to form stable colored complexes with a bright red to purple, purple purplish hue. Hence,、um, this is the form that we most desire. Two tannin compounds can also be bridged by ethanol and form polymers with、um, variable structures. Which are generally less bitter. Interestingly enough,、um, e strings, directly or indirectly, are known to impact the wine phenolic composition as well. Fermentation kinetics、um, resistant towards high temperature production of acetaldehyde and the affinity of color compounds to e cells walls are some of the characteristics of yeast that could affect the phenolic composition of wine. For Pinot Noir, we recommend、um, an artist firm WS, which was originally isolated from a late harvest、uh, Zinfandel from a winery in California.、Um, this yeast strain is well suited for a wide spectrum of red and a,、um, as a robust fermenter. And wine produced with this yeast strain showcases、um, increased fruit and spices expression, and creates wine that. Appear fuller with、um, an enhanced mid palate and increased color. It could also be used as a restart yeast、um, for stock fermentation, as it has a high tolerance to alcohol and low nitrogen requirements. Firm WS is again、um, allergen free, vegan, and approved for use in winemaking、um, of organic grapes. And on the lower right corner here. We have a rosé trial with DM、um, to compare different yeast strains' impact on color intensity. And you can see here,、um, firm WS was found to provide the highest color intensity among all the different yeast strains that were being tested. Once wine finishes alcoholic and malolactic fermentation,、um, the focus of keeping color switch,、uh, switches from trying to maximize extraction and stability to minimize any precipitation of color. In young wines,、um, which is usually the case of、um, New Zealand Pinot Noir, as they are generally not intended to be cellar for a prolonged period of time, colloidal color complexes are made of、um, anthocyanins, tannins, and polysaccharides. So these compounds, in time, tend to polymerize and pass from the soluble state to the colloidal state by forming large aggregates, precipitate, and form a sediment on the bottom of a bottle. Polymerization is faster usually in summer, favored by higher temperatures, while color precipitation happens more frequently during winter, favored by low temperatures. Wines、um, rich in colloidal color matter are more prone to color precipitation, as well as wine produced from、um, moldy grapes, high temperature fermentations, or involve the use of some sort of strong mechanical actions. So, for example,、um, rough handling, crushing,、um, pumping, excessive pump overs, and、um, frequent leasterings could all、um, play a factor. To prevent the precipitation,、um, we recommend the use of a stabilizing agent, an artist's、um, maxigum. So, maxigum is a liquid gum arabic solution. And the protected effect is、um, attributed to a coating of the colloid particles 
that prevents them from agglomerating. So the gum is absorbed by the colloidal colored particles and then its hydrophilic parts here um, spreads in solution, maintaining a separation between the various colloidal particles. And stability is assured when there's a sufficiently high concentration of the protective colloids to cover the entire surface of all the unstable colloid particles. And here um, we perform color stability tests to demonstrate the impact of maximum. Um, this test is done by leaving a filter one sample at minus four Celsius for 24 hours. During this period of time, a majority of the unstable color compounds will precipitate. And you can see for the two um, samples with different rates of maximum additions, they were both able to be color stabilized. So as a recap, um, here are the products that we've mentioned throughout this presentation. First of all, an Artisime Color Plus, an enzyme amaceration to shorten time and enhance extraction. The two exogenous um, tannin products, an Artist Tem Color and Tem Firm Color, a crusher slash maceration, and early stage of fermentation to protect anthocyanin from being oxidized and promote um, formation of stable color complexes condensation. Um, an artist firm WS as a yeast strain choice for young fruity red wine. And then lastly, um, maximum post-fermentation to prevent precipitation of color matters. So this concludes our webinar today. Um, thank you for your attention. And if you have any additional questions um, on technical information, please contact me um, via the email address listed below. Or if you have any inquiries on stock of um, the various products mentioned in the presentation, please reach out to our New Zealand um, sales manager, Shirley, and her email is also listed here. Thank you very much.